when it comes to uh, the mandamano on day three we are in day two we'll look at how it will look tomorrow now still on uh, protests kirinyaga governor anwai guru says residents of the county are busy farming to feed the country and will not take part in destructive demonstration meant to derail the economic development of the county sisi kama watu wa kirinyaga tumekata mandamano tumesema sisi tunataka maendeleo na tunataka vijana wetu waandikwe kazi hawa vijana sasa ukiwaona hapa wako kazini na kuna wengine bado wanatarajia kwa kupewa kazi Maen, ma, maneno ya maen, maandamano haitawaletea kazi hapa ni kuvunja um, maduka hao ma, maandamano zao ni kuenda kuharibu barabara ambazo zimeshatengenezwa sisi watu wa Kirinyaga tumekataa hii maandamano ya aina hiyo tumesema sisi na vijana wetu tunawaki busy kila mtu kazini alafu industrial park pia ikiwa ikijengwa tuandike watu zaidi ikimalizika waandikwe huko ndani waendelee na biashara zao za kujisaidia kibinafsi na pia kusaidia familia zao All right, away from the mandamano, local pension schemes are expanding their search for more profitable, secure and impactful investments to provide diversification and high returns for pensioners. Nwakip Kemboi is on the sidelines of the Kenya Pensions Fund Investment Consortium Annual Investment Conference and now joins us. Noah, so far, how is the progress of the investment proposals? Well, uh, good afternoon, Calvin. As you rightly put it, um, earlier this year and late last year, actually December 2022, uh, the Kenya Pension Investment Consortium put out a request uh, for people to give proposals uh, because they say we have this pool of money. And uh, if you have a legible proposal, uh, something that you can also put, uh, it has utility and viability, we can put money into it. Well, shoot your shot. And that happened. And today we are, of course, at the sidelines of this particular conference. They're going through these proposals that were shortlisted. And it's about diversifying uh, investments, uh, pension investments, because traditionally they have been playing very safe when you look at for example now the big discussion kevin is about uh, public debt look at our, our public debt and locally uh, 33 percent of that is owned by pension funds so they're being encouraged to go out of their comfort zones and uh, at this particular moment i'm joined by uh, kevfik uh, secretariat the head of the secretariat angatia uh, Karungia, your, your name is kind of interesting, Gatia, but we'll just use Gatia. First of all, when you talk about alternative investment, paint for us that picture, the contrast. Traditionally, how have pension funds invested their money and what is this new outlook that you're bringing on board? Uh, thank you very much. So traditional investments are those that are in uh, primarily stocks and bonds. So these are the areas of... Uh, institutional investment that we all know about. Um, whereas alternatives looks beyond that. And when you think about uh, what makes for a good uh, investment portfolio, one of the key tenants there is diversification. Right now, a lot of uh, pension fund investments are primarily concentrated in those traditional asset classes. That would not be a problem if it didn't mean that you, can, you are subjected to um, you know, the difficulties or the challenges you face when they end up underperforming together. And that's exactly the situation we're facing right now in Kenya, where our equity markets is down, as well as the bonds are also suffering. So what does that mean for pension investors? What does that mean for pension uh, contributors and actually pensioners who are waiting to receive a, you know, a secured pension payout? They're receiving less than they could otherwise have gotten. Globally, you find best practice is to invest in more than just two asset classes. And our regulator has actually facilitated local pension schemes to invest into these alternatives that we are talking about. And these alternatives are everything from infrastructure to private equity, private debt funds, real estate investment trusts or REITs and the likes. Okay. So what we're trying to do here at this conference, as you mentioned, is to bring to the table viable investment opportunities mm -hmm. for our local pension schemes to start to take a look at. Okay. Uh, we have also brought um, uh, with us today the project promoters. These are the, these are the firms, the corporates that are looking for these investments and as well as the fund management community 
who have been mandated by their clients, the pension schemes, to assess these opportunities. Okay. And the end goal of all of this is for the local pension schemes to review these projects and eventually for them to actually invest in them to achieve these diversification benefits that I mentioned okay. and all in all to achieve higher returns for, oh, their, okay. for their members. Okay. Uh, th this particular proposal that was put earlier this year, uh, so far, uh, how many proposals did you receive? And uh, in because uh, I know we have so many sectors, which one dominated and which ones did we see uh, very few proposals from? Well, we received oh, we received 57 projects or 57 proposals, totaling over 770 billion shillings, and this was from across all sectors of the economy. Uh, the largest in terms of the most number of transactions or proposals was from the energy sector. And uh, this is not a surprise when you think about um, the uh, investment that is required into our energy infrastructure. And uh, second was the likes of property. Property is also one of the alternative assets that we are looking at. And property goes beyond just the regular uh, residential and commercial that we understand, our office that we understand, but also includes things like logistics and warehousing, which are an important component for our industrialization base. Uh, we also received uh, proposals from uh, what you would not deem typical investment uh, sectors, at least from the private sector. And these include healthcare, water and sanitation. Uh, we received a number of proposals in ICT and telecommunications. And we're very excited to be looking at all of them. Uh, one of the biggest drivers when you talk about, uh, you know, the government of the day normally has an agenda. And um, I look at this particular government, you know, bottom-up economic transformation model. And looking at our markets, MSMEs dominate. Those are the businesses of the day. How much interest have we seen from the MSME sector? Uh, significant, I must say. MSMEs make up, uh, you know, a large section of our, of our, of our economy. I think they, they employ over 90% of our people and uh, their contribution to GDP cannot be overstated. Um, now, investing into MSMEs is where the challenge comes. It's very difficult for a pension scheme, for example, to invest into a small and medium-sized business directly. Uh, but that's now where Kepfik comes in. We are trying to uh, facilitate the investments to get to, from the pension schemes to these, uh, these businesses that require the funding but through instruments like capital market uh, vehicles, like bonds, um, green bonds or otherwise. Uh, we are working with the Nairobi Securities Exchange uh, on the Ibuka program where they have SMEs that are listing. Uh, also, they have a platform that they're developing where, where investors of all, of all forms will be able to, to invest and assess these opportunities directly. But the other way that um, institutional investors can actually support the SME sector where there, is, where there are very good returns is through investing through private equity firms. And these are um, investment experts who have a significant track record and expertise that are raising pools of capital from various investors that they themselves go and manage, they themselves go to invest in these businesses. And uh, the benefit of that is that, like I mentioned, they have the track record and expertise that, that allow us to trust that they will be able to invest prudently, but also they can invest in, in many more jurisdictions and areas other than just one specific uh, uh, sector as well as just one specific country. Right. So it gives us diversification both on a regional basis but also on the sector basis. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I couldn't blame the, the, the pension sector uh, in regards to playing itself because, I mean, the volatility of the market, sometimes it's a little bit shaky. And looking at the sub-Saharan African market right now, what is happening globally, we've seen too much exit of, of, of capital from, from this side of town. And, uh, you know, when the feds are tightening on the other end, everyone wants to go that end. Uh, with, with this kind of investments, uh, is there some sort of buffer that you're building for markets, some level of independence, or the risk is still that high? Uh, there is no way around the fact that a big part of our investment um, uh, activity has been foreign driven. And um, this foreign capital uh, follows the same rules that local capital does. 
which is it is attracted to the areas of greatest opportunity. And um, for the longest time, interest rates in developed markets have been at rock bottom. In fact, there was a time when they were actually negative. At that time, the investors from these global institutions and global pension schemes, they still had their requirements to provide returns. So what did they do? They came into emerging markets, developing markets like ours, and they were looking for returns and they invested in our markets. And you can see that by the, you know, the, the amount of um, trading that is attributed to foreign, uh, foreign investors in our Nairobi Securities Exchange is pretty high. Now, when interest rates start to increase in their home markets, then now the investments on their, on, in their home markets become a lot more attractive versus ours. And given the fact that they are mandated to look for the highest returns, it only makes sense that you'd see them uh, moving towards their home markets. But that is not necessarily true for local investors. For local investors, this is local capital, this is, these are our, this is our country, these are our opportunities. Um, even though we do invest to some degree in offshore, the bulk of our investments are local. So in that case, investing using local capital provides the stability that is lacking when versus relying purely on foreign investment. And that's what we are also trying to push as Kepfic, to have local investors invest in Kenya shillings as well, and not just hard currency, yeah, and because that's a much stabler um, uh, investment base. And through that stable investment base, you know, uh, the cost of capital is also a little bit cheaper than if it was offshore capital. And then now you can have more, more uh, stable growth to the benefit of everyone, including the same investors who are putting in their money. And uh, before I let you go, uh, there is the socioeconomical uh, status of the country and how it imparts on on investment in the country. Uh, since these this funds are local, and uh, also just looking at the environment that we're in, we've seen recently, you know, the issues to do with Mandamano. One of the biggest issues is the cost of living. Uh, as, as a consortium, uh, how, how does this impact on the whole investment environment? I think what what you're seeing all this um you know the the focus on government's um challenges is actually an opportunity for kepfic and for pension schemes as a whole government is facing competing priorities yeah with a very limited pot of funds and um where the public sector spending uh, you know, will need to reduce for various reasons, be it, be it you know, concerns over debt, uh, maybe it's uh, other priorities that they're looking at. It is the opportunity for the private sector to step forward. Um, what is very clear, and you will see in the, it's very well reflected in the opportunities within our deal book, is that there are opportunities in just about every sector. So we are very keen to do our part, yeah. Uh, we are not uh, social investors, if I can put it that way. We are commercial investors. Uh, but the good thing is that a lot of the opportunities that we are looking at do have commercial returns, whether that is in healthcare, whether that is in uh, even areas such as education. Yeah? They are commercially viable opportunities that the private sector can step into. And we are seeing local pension schemes looking to participate. Again, it is identifying the right sector the right particular project, particular project, and then the right vehicle through which we can invest and exit once the time comes. All right. Thank you very much, Ngatia. Gurria, Head of Secretariat at Kenya uh, Private uh, Pension uh, Investment Consortium, Pension Funds Investment Consortium, uh, Kelvin. But that is uh, the letters from this end. They're saying it's about diversifying and taking advantage of opportunities. Getting out of the comfort zone, and making investment because right now even when you speak to our local businesses they're saying where are the funds to come into this business as we have great ideas and one of the sources of the funds is the pension funds and they're saying that we are moving out of that comfort zone investing in these sectors back to you calvin all right, thank you so much, Noah, for that information on um, Investments Consortium of Kenya. We're going to go for a short break, but don't go too far. We'll be back with more.